Hey everyone, boy do we have a crazy video to go through today. The full self-driving beta seems to have grown a pair with the last software update, and you're gonna see some crazy aggressive San Francisco human-style maneuvers that are definitely brand new behaviors that I have never seen before. And while on paper this is only a small dot update of version 11, I think you're going to agree that it is quite a major one, only disguised as a minor one. And while this three and a half hour drive was definitely far from perfect, you're going to see what it's like when really pushed over the limits and also what it's really capable of. Now, a little disclaimer before we begin, full self-driving is still in beta, and I am responsible for the vehicle at all times during these drives. There are quite a few times where you're gonna see some behavior I probably should have intervened for, but I'm purposely giving the beta as long of a leash as I possibly can, for science, of course. But one area you definitely should not be giving a long leash to is your internet security. And this video's sponsor can help you with exactly that. Private Internet Access is a virtual private network that routes your online traffic through secure tunnels and helps to protect you from the prying eyes of hackers, internet service providers, and others who want to collect your data without your consent. PIA has been my VPN of choice for years now because of their commitment to privacy and strict no-logging data policies, which have been proven multiple times in court. They have over 30 million downloads and are completely open source, meaning you can view the actual source code for yourself and even use custom scripts to do things like port forwarding and DNS customization, which really opens up the possibilities and use cases. They have a world-class server infrastructure, which enables you to spoof your geolocation to one of 84 countries in all 50 US states, which unlocks region lock content on all major streaming services and can even help with getting you a better deal on things like clothes, flights, and games. By using my special link in the description, you can get 83% off and four months free, which comes out to just over $2 a month. A great deal for the features you're getting here. And best of all, you can now use a single subscription to protect an unlimited amount of devices simultaneously. They have support staff available 24 seven and a 30 day money back guarantee. So you can give it a try with confidence. Thanks again to PIA for sponsoring my videos. We're starting this drive at the supercharger on Geary Boulevard, which is on top of a building. And as you might be able to see, the beta seems to think we're on the road, not on top of the building, which means it's not gonna be able to rely on the map or the navigation path to get us out of here. After engaging autopilot, I can kind of tell it thinks it's on the street based off the 35 mile an hour speed limit and the way it's accelerating here. Also not doing a great job slowing for these speed bumps, but at least they're small ones. Then it comes up to where it has the left turn in the navigation path. You can see that left-hand turn signal come on, but there is no left turn here to make. You can see the beta creep out a few times here, trying to get a better view to see if there's any type of left-hand turn that it can make, but obviously there is not. Um, then something interesting happens. A Model 3 approaches from our right, and it seems to understand that it can go that way. And I'm gonna transition back inside the car here for a second, just to show you that the navigation path has not updated, meaning it seems to be figuring out how to get out of here by using vision alone and abandoning its navigation route, which I think is very impressive. I've actually tried this same thing in the past, but previously was unsuccessful. So this version seems to be able to abandon its navigation route and follow vision a little bit better than previous versions. And approaching the last stop sign that gets us out of this parking lot, you can see it's kind of centered on the road. Um, I would be a little bit further off to the right, but um, it was fine. The Model 3 in front of us had plenty of room to pull in here. Just not exactly where I would be stopped at this stop sign. Then after it checks and makes sure it's clear, we do get a little bit of an awkward break uh, as it does one final check, but is able to successfully get us out of here. This is actually a two lane road, but all the lane markings seem to have kind of gone away. You can see it's kind of hanging out in the middle here and also displays a message saying that it's limiting the max speed for the road type. But then as soon as some arrows appear on the ground and we get some lane markings, it goes back to the proper side. Another area that seems to have gotten a bump in performance is the visualizations themselves. It was listed in the release notes that the visualizations have been improved, but no mention of what exactly was improved, so it's kind of up to us to figure it out. I don't necessarily see anything brand new on them, like updated car models or anything like that, but what I do notice is that it seems to be able to see and visualize traffic a lot further out, and also the roads and boundaries it's drawing are extremely steady. 
It used to be that when areas of the road were obstructed, the visualizations would kind of become unsteady, but they seem extremely solid now. It's kind of wild to me to compare the visualizations we have now to the original 3D boxes we got with really early versions of the beta. Definitely looking more and more polished with every single update. Waiting our turn at this stop sign and you can see autopilot has to be pretty patient here. There's kind of a lot of moving parts, a lot of vehicles and pedestrians and stuff, but seems to be doing a really nice job of highlighting and controlling for the right vehicles and pedestrians. So you can see the ones it's highlighting in blue are the ones that it's waiting for, um, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of flickering or at being indecisive about what to control for, so pretty good stuff. Another area of improvement that makes the beta a lot more comfortable around these streets is its speed control over blind crests. So you see we have a hill in front of us that we can't really see over, and the beta, instead of accelerating hard like it used to, it waits to get over the hill before it really starts accelerating. It makes going over those blind crests a lot more comfortable than before. Seems to have a little bit of trouble at this next stop sign, figuring out that that car to our right is parked. Uh, may have to do with the way the wheels are turned. Uh, and you can see it does take a little while before it figures out that they are parked. And I did not override the accelerator pedal here. The car did figure that one out on its own. And if I do any interventions or disengagements, I will let you know. Little bit of a nitpick here, but you can see the beta turn on the left-hand turn signal at this stop sign, not because we're turning left, but because we're getting into that left-hand turn lane to make a uh, left turn at the light ahead. I know that's seemingly small, but that is something that can confuse other human drivers around us, and I prefer if it did its signaling after the intersection. Something a bit crazy happens at this next intersection, so I'll just let you watch it, and then we'll watch it again in slow-mo and break it down. What you just saw there was the beta incorrectly taking the right away. Let's see if we can figure out what happened. As the light turns green, it does appear to be correctly yielding to the oncoming traffic, but when they don't move through the intersection, the driver in front of us takes the opportunity, and while the oncoming car was obstructed, the beta started detecting it as a parked car. Honestly, probably a pretty well-deserved honk there. Uh, I did submit a snapshot to send this data back to the autopilot team for them to review. You could definitely argue that I should have disengaged in that moment, but honestly, I see moves like that happen in San Francisco all the time and didn't feel that there was a safety issue, but definitely not what the car should have done. The good news in all of this is that it didn't panic and stop in the middle of the road when it saw the oncoming car approaching. It continued its original planned maneuver and got out of the intersection, which is much better than previous versions would have done, but still not the right thing to do. I do have the car in the assertive autopilot setting, but man, this was uh, assertive and a half. It was the most assertive I've ever seen, until later in the drive at least. What happens next here is truly remarkable, but it has nothing to do with autopilot. The gentleman in the back seat of the car to the left seems to recognize me and rolls down his window to say what's up. But not only that, the car to our right also does the same thing and he says he watches my YouTube channel. And ladies and gentlemen, for that brief moment of time, I was literally surrounded by fans. I think this means I've finally made it. All joking aside, I still cannot believe that my car gets recognized in public. So thank you to all of you who flag me down in traffic and say hi at Superchargers. You really make my day every time. We're going 35 miles an hour here, which feels extremely slow, but it is the speed limit, as you can see on these numerous signs we drive by, but I cannot tell you how big of an obstruction I feel like right now. I don't use a speed offset on this full self-driving profile I use for videos because I want to replicate robo-taxi settings the best that I can, which means no speeding. But when the car obeys the speed limit to a T, it can feel pretty uncomfortable. Autopilot forced to do some quick negotiating to get us to our exit, which is coming up very soon, but you can see it's able to complete this double lane change very smoothly and does so in one motion, pretty much exactly how I would have done it. Also, some very nice views of the Golden Gate Bridge ahead as we continue on our sightseeing tour. There is a stop sign for traffic that goes to our left and to our right we do have a yield sign and unfortunately autopilot slows down thinking it has to stop here which does upset the truck behind us who uh, nearly rear ends us but does continue and even gets us all the way into this left hand lane to make the left turn. 
then you can see the path planer get a little bit squirrely as we make this right hand turn. I believe it's that white pylon in the road, um, but you can see the beta kind of swerving a little bit back and forth on the road, trying to figure out the best path through this uh, pretty tight right hand turn. Then up here on the right, we have a street that kind of dead ends with a big log in the way. I think it's pretty interesting that you can see it visualized on the autopilot visualizations. Uh, has to be using the occupancy network or something for that. Pretty cool. We are now approaching an Amazon delivery van who's making a delivery and kind of double parked in the road. Technically, there is a little bit of room to go around him on the left, but we'd have to go over a pretty large bump in order to do that. Um, and FSD decides to just wait here, uh, which actually was fine with me. Didn't take him very long at all to get going again, but unfortunately our navigation path has us following this Amazon delivery driver all the way to his next delivery. How unlucky. You can see the message, the navigation is ending in the, in the next uh, 50, 25 feet or so, which is just right beyond this delivery van here. And unfortunately, he doesn't pull very far up, which leaves a pretty tiny gap for us to fit through here. And you can hear uh, autopilot clunking the brakes trying to figure this out. I do put in a new nav route and waited a while to see if it would do it on its own, but unfortunately it just did not feel confident enough to do this on its own. So I am overriding the accelerator pedal here um, to get it through. Going to put a new tracker for interventions and disengagements on the screen. So let me know what you think of that. Um, and I go ahead and just override here. And you can see we have to get really close, uh, well within a foot here. And Autopilot folds the mirrors automatically to get us through that little gap, which was pretty cool. But like I said, I did have to override the accelerator pedal there. Approaching the next stop sign, we have fairly low visibility from the left. You can see there's a sign there, kind of like right where the driver's view would be that's obstructing the road. Definitely not ideal. And it seemed to want to proceed there for a second before it spotted that truck come out from underneath the sign. But it did have a pretty good reaction time after the truck became visible. So it did get us through here, no problem. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through the majority of these side streets until we get back into the city and into some more challenging situations. Cause at this point, the beta is really good at driving on these kinds of streets to the point where it's kind of getting boring, which is actually a great thing. There are some good examples of it here of a good path planning and taking the inside out line through corners like the racing line and hugging the inside of turns like it should. But um, yeah, we already know how good it is at that. Also does a pretty good job up here when this BMW kind of cuts us off to our right. Uh, does a good job of not overreacting and just continuing on. Older versions of the beta would have definitely hit the brakes a little bit harder than that. But uh, this one seems to be able to predict the movement just that much better. And while we're letting the car drive back into the city, I'd like to get your feedback on something. You may or may not have noticed that I'm using a wider aspect ratio in this video than normal. It's two to one versus the normal 16 by nine. And the reason for that is that I've been making videos for my AI driver shorts channel, which shows highlights of these drives, but also forces me to edit using a portrait resolution, which I absolutely cannot stand. You lose so much information and it is so inferior to widescreen resolutions, but I can't argue with the amount of views they're getting. So while I will continue to make them, I need to keep myself sane by stretching out the resolution of my normal videos for a while to keep some balance in my life. So please let me know what you think. This resolution should look a little better on a smartphone, but you might lose a little bit of view on the top of the screen. Is the trade-off worth it? please let me know what you prefer in the comments or if you noticed anything at all. The beta seems to have some difficulty predicting the movement of these pedestrians. You can see it move to the right hand side of the road rather than just waiting for them to cross, which was interesting. I've actually seen this same kind of thing before from videos I've seen of Cruz and Waymo as well, where they appear to be steering into the pedestrian's path, but in reality are actually trying their best to avoid them. Definitely a robotic kind of mistake. I noticed that the pedestrians weren't highlighted in blue in that whole interaction, which makes me think that the advanced path planning wasn't being used for them, and I kind of wonder why. I still can't figure out what turns that advanced path prediction on for objects and when it decides not to use it. But I'm hoping in future updates we see more and more objects highlighted in blue because 
the interactions where that happens and when that system is running seem to be a lot better than without. So our set destination is into this parking lot, but you can see Autopilot has its right turn signal on, um, which confuses the car to our right. Definitely kind of an awkward situation here as Autopilot waits for the pedestrians to kind of cross the street and that car is sitting there too. That would be one of those times where the right-hand turn signal should not have been used, even though we were technically making a right-hand turn. And as we pull in here, I realize that I've made a mistake and we should not be driving into this area, authorized personnel only. So I do disengage, but um, I'm not going to count this one as a disengagement, as this was just my bad luck with choosing a random destination in the map. And after setting in a new navigation point on the map, which was hopefully better than the last one that I just did, we can continue. One thing I want you to pay attention to is the turn signals. Notice how the left turn signal is on right now, and then it switches to the right-hand turn signal, and then back to the left-hand turn signal. This kind of stuff just drives me crazy. All this is doing is confusing everybody around us. So you can see now it's back to left, now it's back to right. No idea why it, this still has such a big problem with turn signals, but definitely still one of my biggest complaints using autopilot. At this next intersection here, we have a stop sign to the right, which almost seems like it should be a yield sign. You can see the driver in front of us completely ignore it. And then interestingly enough, Autopilot only goes down to about four miles an hour and does a California roll through here, which I haven't seen in quite a long time. I really don't mind that move at all because it's how a human would do it, but don't tell the NHTSA. Next interaction might not look like much, but I think it's pretty incredible. We have a pedestrian walking towards the crosswalk and instead of freaking out, Autopilot just continues on like nothing happened. And I actually think that one's worth going back and taking another look at in slow motion. You can see her aggressively walking towards this crosswalk and only stopping at the edge of the road. Older versions of the beta would have absolutely slammed on the brakes to give them the right of way. This version seems to be doing a much better job of predicting pedestrians' actions and not overreacting as much as it used to. But that situation can kind of go both ways sometimes, and there's a pretty crazy example of this behavior, which you will see in the second part of this drive. Also wanted to apologize for the sound. I know sometimes there's like clipping because of the wind noise. Um, I am using this new binaural audio setup and kind of still getting used to it and the best way to record it. So uh, forgive me if the audio is kind of a little bit choppy sometimes. It was kind of a windy day in San Francisco and there were times where wind just came through the window and hit the mics directly, but um, I'll get better with more practice, I promise. Coming up, we have a right and then an immediate left, but Autopilot takes the wrong right. Uh, you can see it pulling into this driveway here, um, which is obviously not the spot we want to be in. And I did try to let it figure out on its own, but unfortunately it was pretty stuck here. So I did end up overriding the accelerator pedal again, which counts for our second intervention of the drive. Just seemed to need a little bit of a push of encouragement to get it back onto the road. And as we were waiting to turn left at this stoplight, a big truck pulls up next to us, which is always uncomfortable when you're making a turn like this. But Autopilot actually handles this one pretty nicely and swings out wide to give that truck as much room as it possibly can, which felt really good. Driving next to big trucks can be pretty uncomfortable, which is something that is proven right up here. Uh, unfortunately, this truck cuts over on their lane pretty heavily, and um, although Autopilot probably would have been fine there, I did disengage because I did not feel comfortable. It is unfortunate that that was our first disengagement of the drive, but I did not want to get sandwiched in there if he decided to pull over just a little bit further. Coming up to this light, we actually are supposed to go straight through here and Autopilot is in the wrong lane. This is a left turn only lane, uh, which you can see by the lines on the road. The good news is as we were waiting for this light, the path planner seems to be very confident that it's just gonna continue to make this left, which it should do since it is in the wrong lane. Unfortunately though, as the light turns green, Autopilot notices a gap open up behind us and decides to go for it which does cause the second disengagement of the drive. Again, not really a safety related disengagement, just not a maneuver that I feel comfortable letting the car make. I'd rather take over and let the autopilot team review that one. We do have a stop sign ahead into a small merge, but we almost have our own protected lane. So the traffic turning left is has a solid white line that they're not supposed to cross. You can see the car in front of us does cross that line, but the beta handled it very smoothly. 
We are approaching another one of those yield signs with the stop sign to the left, and you can see a message on the screen saying autopilot coming to a stop here, um, which ended up being fine because we were letting pedestrians cross. Then also does a great job waiting for this third pedestrian coming up from behind us, uh, running up to cross the street. Now, I gotta be honest, I definitely would have let the first group of pedestrians go, but I probably wouldn't have even noticed that third one running up from behind the car. That is one of the advantages of being able to see and react to things in all 360 degrees, which of course humans cannot do. And for the second time in the drive, Autopilot having a little bit of issue figuring out that it doesn't need to yield for this parked vehicle. And again, this one has the turned tires, uh, so I'm not sure if maybe that's what's causing the issue, uh, but does figure out that it's parked and proceeds on its own. A little bit of jitter in the steering wheel at this next left-hand turn. You can see the path planner kind of shifting to the left and the right. Um, it does figure it out, and then once the road becomes clear, there is a car that approaches from the left just off screen and uh, Autopilot thought it was going to cut out in front of us for a moment, but they ended up making a right turn so we didn't have to deal with them. You can also see Autopilot proceeding through these roads very cautiously. The intersection ahead has two roads come together and no traffic controls, so it slows down and stops to check, but unfortunately too slow for traffic behind. I'm thinking that maybe I should add a honk counter along with the uh, disengagement and intervention counter that I have here. I can see Autopilot's intention there, just double checking for traffic that could be coming from the right hand side, um, but doing so a little slowly. Speaking of which, we are now approaching that same intersection, but from the other side. But this time Autopilot doesn't slow down as much to check for traffic. You can see it does break to give them the right of way, but very late. I would have uh, hit the brakes just like they did. Definitely not ideal behavior there. Um, at least it was able to get through its on its own and it took the initiative after that little interaction. But yeah, definitely not ideal behavior there. Then does a pretty good job of getting us out of these narrow streets and even has good interactions with some other cars on the way out. And although that last thing was rough, the good news in all of this is that the car seems to be doing a better and better job of correcting the mistakes it makes in a way that other humans on the road can understand instead of getting completely stuck like it would have previously. Like I've mentioned in the past, I don't really think it's possible to have a self-driving car that never makes mistakes. What's important is how it behaves while correcting the mistakes it makes. So not trying to downplay the mistakes it's making here, but also mentioning that it's good that it can get out of them on its own. The interior camera battery runs out right here, so we are now going to be relying on just the visualizations and external camera for the remainder of the video. This next unprotected left-hand turn also does get a little bit awkward, as you will see. As we approach the intersection, there's obviously not a good time to go, but the beta starts turning the wheel to the right ever so slightly, and it's actually sitting pretty far right offset in its lane, which is kind of unfortunate for traffic behind us because they would typically pass here. The visualization does a pretty good job of showing where the car is sitting in its lane, which is probably not the right thing to do as other cars have to go pretty far over off to the right to get past us. This is a pretty uncomfortable situation and just makes us look like a bad driver. And we get a little honk from the Model 3. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that one. Unfortunately, no good gaps open up that are wide enough to take. There could technically be a couple of them, but it would be really close. And you can see the light does turn red as we're sitting in this intersection. Luckily, Autopilot does proceed after this, but man, that was, uh, that was a pretty rough one. And we will be finishing up this drive on some narrow streets here. Interestingly, there's no speed limit sign or anything, but Autopilot changes the speed to 19 miles an hour. I don't really know why that happened. As you can see, now it's back to 25, so um, maybe it was limiting it because the streets are narrow? I'm really not sure. Another really aggressive move happens up here that surprised me quite a bit. You can see we have another Amazon delivery van pulled off to the side of the road and a car approaching ahead. Autopilot yields to the first one, but takes the right of way of the second one. This is by far one of the most aggressive things that I've ever seen out of the beta, where it clearly knew that car was coming, but decided to go for it anyway, knowing that they would stop for us. I know we didn't get into a few of the clips that were in the intro that happened on the second leg of this drive, and I did plan to make this one entire video, but after seeing how long this is, you probably need a break from my rambling, so I'm going to make an independent executive decision and split this video into two. But trust me, you're going to want to watch part two, which has even more aggression than we saw in this video. So be sure to get subscribed to see that.
I read all comments, so please leave feedback if you have any. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, everyone. Bye.